Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to another Monday Morning Art Talk. Whippy! Welcome to another Monday morning art talk. So today I wanted to talk about trying to find your happy place within art. Now this is a a tough thing. It's it's not easy and you go, well, what is your happy place? What are you even talking about? What do you mean? And what I mean is it's about trying to find that thing that you just enjoy doing um, over and over and over again, just and, and the big reminders coming back from Comic-Con and meeting so many artists and looking through portfolios and just not knowing, not feeling fulfilled, not knowing what it is you really want to do, what you want to keep pursuing. I want to do art, but I don't know what. And so it's trying to find that happy place because I think the only way that you can start to even progress through this career, if this is what you want to do, some of you may just be doing it for fun, just a hobby, other of you guys are determined to make it a career, is trying to find that, that real purpose, right? So what you're trying to find, and I think the purpose has to be, is you can't just be claimed to define, hey, this is my purpose, I'm going to become a teacher, I'm going to become an uh, artist in concept animation, I'm going to, um, you know, whatever it may be is the thing is that you got to be happy with it and you got to find that happy place. So you, and this goes back to knowing what it is you enjoy the most. What do you find yourself doing filling up your sketchbooks with? Do you find yourself painting horses all day long? Maybe unicorns, maybe dragons, maybe something like that. And you like doing your little paintings and that's something you want to do, well, you got to ask yourself, that's my happy place. That's what I enjoy doing. Do I want to make a living at this? And hopefully the answer is yes. Well, then you got to start working towards, well, who who's my market? Who can I start showing my, my horse paintings to that's going to get eyeballs on it so people inevitably can purchase them because we're commercial artists. We want to make a living at doing this. This is what we have to do. So finding that happy place is that happy place that... Uh, you love drawing uh, characters, you know, not not drawing backgrounds. Like for me, I don't like drawing backgrounds. That's not my happy place. I don't want to be there. I think to me, that's misery for me. I don't, I don't want to be there. So I'm going to try to avoid that. So where what it is is following that happy place. I knew when I was younger, when I was in high school and I was drawing characters all the time, that it was happy. And, and you know it's a happy place because you're doing it all the time. Just think about anything that makes you happy, usually you're going to try to find ways to do it as much as possible, you know, depending if it's going to cost money or whatever it may be. You might have limitations to go, hey, I love skydiving and that makes me really happy. Well, it gets expensive to do that all the time. So it's, but it's still finding those things that are going to bring that true joy to you and that way you'll continue to do it. Because again, when you know you've already been through this, when you're not happy with the situation, you're going to try to get out of it somehow. Otherwise, you're going to live in misery. If you're not happy with a product, you're going to try to return it. Otherwise, you're going to realize you just wasted all your money and um, you're never going to use it. So our goal is to constantly find that source of that little bit of happiness, that fulfillment. And this is the discovery. And are you going to make it in your chosen field, even though this makes you happy? Hey, man, I love painting butterflies. Can you make a living at painting butterflies? Well, some people can, but it's not for everyone. Not everyone can. Maybe you got to start moving things around. Well, maybe it's not butterflies, but it's more just concept of animals and I want to start to get known as that person that people are going to come to me because they see that I'm drawing insects and 
there's, you know, things that happen. Yeah, I mean, maybe you might end up being an illustrator for the zoo or so for some science magazine or something like that. Again, this is where you're going to take whatever that happy little thing is that you enjoy, try to turn it into something because it'll eventually become something. And, and all I can do is really talk about my experience because you guys aren't me, but I want to share with you, again, that thought process. So for me, my happy space was drawing people. My happy space was going to life drawing. My happy space was caricaturing people and taking all those little pieces of happy and you start to merge them all together and hopefully something happens and, and it can turn into something. But I do feel if you're pursuing it, there's the phone. All of a sudden I'm going to vanish and I'm going to come back. So if you're finding these things, you start to just merge them together and hopefully develop it into something and that's up to you to make it something. And it's always going to be up to you. Yes, are we under the di dictation, so to speak, of other people, whether they want to hire us or not for certain jobs? Absolutely. Where it's, it's not our, it's not our call. Hey man, I'm putting my stuff out there, but they don't want to hire me, but that's what I want to do. Well, it's not the right time or it's not the right job. Does that mean that you just give up and you don't pursue your happy? You don't pursue the thing that you want to do? Otherwise, you work harder and harder and harder to try to make something work. And it's my belief that anything that you set your mind to do that you truly want to create. And I know so many people like this. Professionals, professionals, people, friends of mine, colleagues, people who aren't even necessarily friends. But again, I'm more associated through the business somehow. These people who over and over again, I see that they're, man, that guy is just driven. That guy just, when he wants to do something, he does it and he makes it happen. And again, it's, and then it, of course, like I mentioned, it's the timing. It comes down to the three things again, as I'm wrapping up my art talk here with uh, finding the happy is you got to know the story. You got to have the intention. You got to have the intent. You got to have the narrative. You got to know what that is going to be. What is that happy place? What are you trying to pursue? Number two is you just got to put it into action. You just got to make it happen. Do what you can. And if that action means, hey man, you got to spend the next two years improving your skill set, improving your gestures, improving your shape language, improving your observation, then that's timing. That's number three. That's the timing. That's what it's going to take. But at least you're moving in that direction and not giving up. So try to find that thing that makes you happy. You know what it is. And again, you have to write these things down. Do not neglect writing things down. Put it on paper. Make it happen. Just the just persistence, working at this, having a lot of patience to go along with it is going to be vital. But you can do it and you're in control of it, make it happen, all right? Find your happy, search, dig, dig deep, whatever it takes, it's in with you already, fulfill it, just do it, just go for it, keep on trucking. All right, make it a great week, and I'll talk to you guys next week. Take care.